some reasoning that I'm not going to say because I don't want to dare make it look like I'm trying to deflect blame because it's mine. Victims that you haven't heard from is my family. Do not try to deceive me, defy me. You will not like the consequences. Today is that day. I betrayed everybody that we possibly knew. I don't could barely look at you. He held you up as a father figure. He supported you when people, when you were telling everybody it's a witch hunt. He still believed you. The impact of Jamie Knowles' actions had shattered lives in ways the former sheriff could not have anticipated, or perhaps he simply didn't care. Faces, old and young, filled the gallery, some marked with grief, others with anger. The words they spoke were not simply recitations of facts, they were testimonies of deep betrayal and loss. The first to speak was Matt Owen, a once close friend and political ally of Noel. His voice trembled, not with fear, but with barely contained fury. You used us, he said, each word cutting through the silence. You used people who trusted you, who believed in you. We fought by your side to rid this country of corruption, only to find out that you were the wall. Owen's statement echoed through the courtroom, setting the tone for what would be a long day of emotional and heartfelt declarations. Jamie Knowles' fall from grace was not just a story of crime, but one of moral decay. He had served eight years as sheriff of Clark County, a position that was supposed to come with honor, integrity, and selflessness. Instead, his tenure became synonymous with theft, deceit, and corruption so staggering that it rattled the entire community. The crowd sat, eyes fixed on Noel, who sat with his head bowed, tears welling up in his eyes, though whether from guilt or self-pity, no one could say. Any first responder or anyone else that, that's ever worn a badge and taken that oath has betrayed the trust of the public. He did so knowingly, wittingly for personal gain, and, he, and he, that personal gain was put ahead of patients and lives. The scripture says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Suzanne Davis, a former employee of New Chapel EMS, approached the stand with the weight of a thousand disappointments in her voice. She spoke of an unsafe work environment, one where her fire equipment never fit, where chaos reigned and the basic needs of her job were consistently unmet. But it wasn't just the professional failure that had broken her, it was the human cost. I found a friend lifeless during one of our runs, she said, her voice cracking, and yet I was told to return to work as if nothing had happened, as if that loss didn't matter. Then came the harrowing testimony of Susanna Worrell, whose brother-in-law, David Red Worrell, had collapsed at a polling site last election day. Firefighters and bystanders performed CPR, but the ambulance took 16 agonizing minutes to arrive. By the time they reached the hospital, it was too late. Red was gone. Could he still be alive if the ambulance had arrived faster? Maybe, Susanna said, holding back tears. If Jamie Knoll hadn't drained $5 million from New Chapel's funds for his fancy vacations, expensive suits, and high-dollar cigars, my family might not be living in this nightmare. The weight of her loss was unbearable, made all the worse by the knowledge that Noel's greed had played a part in her brother-in-law's demise. Each story built upon the last, a rising crescendo of anger, hurt, and disbelief. Noel's web of corruption had ensnared everyone around him, his family, friends, colleagues, even the citizens of Clark County who had trusted him with their votes. He had used their faith in him as a shield, while secretly draining millions from county funds to fuel his lavish lifestyle. From luxury cars to vacations, he took it all while leaving behind broken people and an unshakable sense of betrayal. We truly believe that William Thornton, my dad, would have had a fighting chance of survival if New Chapel was dispatched to us. If Jamie Knoll and his family had not spent approximately $5 million of New Chapel's money, $5 cigars, cars, and other items, my life would be completely different today. Hope Knoll, the ex-wife of Knoll's late brother Leon, delivered one of the most damning statements. Her words cut through Knoll's composure like a knife. There are no words to describe how much disgust I feel for you, she spat, glaring at him with visible hatred. She didn't stop there. She went for the jugular, wishing for his downfall with all the venom she could muster. I hope Leon haunts you every single day of your prison sentence, she said, her voice thick with rage. Her attack was personal, emotional, and raw, bringing to light yet another layer of betrayal. Noel had not only stolen from the community, but he had also mishandled his brother's estate, 
cheating his own nieces and nephews out of their inheritance. Are you related uh, to the defendant, uh, Jason Knoll? Not anymore. I'm the ex-wife of Leon Knoll, and I have his son, Jack Knoll. We have a son together. These are nieces and nephews of, mm -hmm. uh, of Jamie's. Okay. I want to aim this directly at you, okay? Leon trusted you to do what was right for his children since he was not going to make it. He trusted you to handle Leon's estate and give the kids what was rightfully theirs when he passed away. I don't see how you can say in your Facebook post that your brother Leon is missed and loved after what you've done to him and his children. Do you remember him passing away? I'm sure you do since you were there in the hospital with, with all of us when he did. And you claim to be a Christian man. Did you know greed was one of the seven deadly sins? I'm not sure why you felt the need to steal from the estate since you were already stealing from everyone else. I remember having numerous phone calls with you, trusting you, even sent you a thank you gift of cigars. Looking back now, I wish I had a gotten, gotten a lawyer for the kids when he passed. I had them sent to your house and you never even acknowledged it or said thank you. Now I know why. From your nephews Dorian, Jack, from your niece Taylor, find out that you have stolen from the same estate that I thanked you for handling. The brother's children who lost their father like that wasn't bad enough. By the time Hope Noel finished reading a letter from her niece, which included the line, Grandpa and Leon would be so disappointed in you, Noel was visibly shaking. He tried to contain himself, but tears streamed down his face as he muttered an apology to his family, most of whom were notably absent from the courtroom. It's all my fault, he whispered, his voice breaking, but the room remained cold, unmoved by his tears. When Noel finally addressed the court, his voice wavered as he attempted to take responsibility. He apologized to his family, to his friends, to the people of Clark County, but his words rang hollow. I violated your trust, he said, his eyes darting nervously around the room. I let sin overtake me. He even offered up a short prayer, but no one in the room seemed to care for his newfound spirituality. To those gathered, it was just another ploy, another performance in a long line of deceitful acts. Repent, which I have in the will, and ask for forgiveness, and I apologize. I'm sorry I wasn't able to apologize to any of the witnesses that spoke earlier. For some reasoning that I'm not going to say because I don't want to dare make it look like I'm trying to deflect blame because it's mine. Victims that you haven't heard from is my family. I ask my kids to uh, forgive me not being honest with them about where the money was spent or came from. And my daughter Casey could lose her freedom because of me. I controlled everything when it came to our family's finances. It was in my wheelhouse. My family trusted me to do that. And I obviously didn't do it. Judge Larry Medlock was not swayed by Noel's display of emotion. His words were sharp and unforgiving as he delivered the sentence. You have tarnished the badge you were entrusted with, he said, his voice cold and measured. You, who claimed to stand for justice, behaved like a political fascist, bullying those who didn't bend to your will. The judge's condemnation was severe, and it reflected the gravity of Noel's crimes. He had not only stolen millions, but he had also destroyed lives, eroded trust, and left behind a community in shambles. Noel's crimes weren't limited to theft and tax evasion. He had orchestrated a series of corrupt schemes, ranging from ghost employment to misuse of public property. Investigators discovered that he had used county employees to work on his private property, even offering them discounted public vehicles. He had also been tied to a far-right extremist group, adding yet another disturbing layer to his already sinister profile. You are not the law. You don't interpret the law. You don't enforce the law. You're not above the law that you are in contempt of this court. Take him into custody. Now, what is an appropriate sanction? This is Noel being put in handcuffs at the Clark County Courthouse. Noel was involved in, quote, troubling and improper time off payments. His misuse of power extended beyond theft and corruption. He had instilled fear in those around him, manipulating the political landscape and bullying anyone who dared oppose him. But perhaps the most heart-wrenching part of Noel's criminal legacy was the effect it had on those who relied on New Chapel EMS for medical care. Families who had lost loved ones because ambulances arrived late, or not at all, were left wondering what might have been. Could their family members have been saved if New Chapel had been properly funded? The answer was haunting and unspoken. 
In the end, the judge sentenced Noel to 12 years in prison, along with an order to pay over $3 million in restitution. It wasn't enough to heal the wounds he had inflicted, but it was a start. As Noel was led away in handcuffs, there was no sympathy left for him in the courtroom. The man who had once been a symbol of justice and leadership was now nothing more than a criminal, his legacy tarnished forever. The case had gripped Clark County for over a year, starting with a raid on Noel's home that had uncovered a treasure trove of stolen goods, everything from shipping containers to luxury vehicles. Investigators had found over $2 million in personal expenses charged to New Chapel's credit card, including trips, cars, clothes, and even a $2,500 bill at Hooters. It was as if Noel had taken everything he could, no matter how petty or outrageous. Misty Noel filed the paperwork today in Clark County Court. The wife of former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Noel has filed for divorce. Noel, his wife Misty, and their daughter Casey are all accused of misusing millions of dollars from the Utica Township Volunteer Firefighters Association. Casey Knoll is asking to delay her trial set for later this month. Separate motions, Misty and Casey Knoll are asking for their cases to be joined. Misty, however, though, is charged with a level five felony and that requires a 12 person jury if the mother and daughter potentially could be tried together in this case. The only problem, though, was that Casey Knoll is charged with a level six felony. Misty Knoll will ultimately be the one to go to trial in October while her daughter's trial now is up in the air. His family, too, had been dragged into the muck. Noel's wife, Misty, and his daughter, Casey, faced their own criminal charges for participating in the theft. They had used stolen funds for personal luxuries, from clothes and cosmetics to trips and Amazon orders. Their trials were yet to begin, but the evidence against them was damning. As the courtroom finally emptied, a sense of relief washed over those who had come to witness the downfall of a man they had once respected. Noel was no longer the powerful sheriff who could manipulate elections or crush political rivals. He was a broken man, disgraced and imprisoned. But for the victims, the pain of his betrayal would linger long after the headlines faded. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.